Hello. I'd like to discuss a program that uh, is on the web called MoleCalc or the Molecular Calculator. And uh, if you do a Google search for the Molecular Calculator or MoleCalc, you will find this program. Um, and there's a nice tutorial associated with the program, so you can uh, watch that tutorial to learn how to use it. I'm not going to go into that since it's readily available on the web. But I'd like to create uh, carbon dioxide and discuss its properties, some of its properties. Uh, I'm particularly interested today in the uh, vibrational motions uh, and vibrational spectra of carbon dioxide because, because uh, carbon dioxide absorbs some infrared radiation that the, the Earth emits. It uh, traps some of the Earth's uh, emitted energy and is a greenhouse gas. So uh, I'm going to begin by taking the methane, carbon with four hydrogens, and I'm going to click on the oxygen atom because carbon dioxide has two oxygens. And click there. So I have carbon with two actually hydroxy groups, but if I take this single bond and convert it to a double bond and take this, let me do it again, and this one, I get carbon dioxide, but not with the appropriate linear structure. Now we're going to use something called a MMFF force field to op optimize the structure. And while that's optimizing, I just say this is a great program and it can calculate all kinds of properties like bond lengths, bond angles, and all kinds of things about um, any molecule you can think of. Okay, it's still optimizing. I think it's almost done now. All right, now we want to do something called uh, a uh, calculate to the properties. And yes, I'm sure. So it's calculating the properties. And uh, there's our carbon dioxide. And there are three, um, four different possibilities. We can get thermodynamic properties, molecular orbitals, vibrational frequencies, and polarity. I'm going to focus on vibrational frequencies. Now, um, carbon dioxide has four vibrations, but uh, two of them have the same frequency. This, this bending motion, it could bend in the plane of the screen or out of the plane of the screen, and it, it, it involves the same frequency. The frequency in wave numbers, waves per centimeter, is uh, 521 wave numbers or waves per centimeter. And uh, let me just stop it for a second. Uh, carbon dioxide is a linear molecule, but the bonds in carbon dioxide, although the overall molecule has no dipole moment, the bonds are polar. Oxygen being more electronegative than carbon uh, pulls the electrons toward it. So this is a polar bond. This is slightly negative and this is slightly positive. And likewise, this one's negative and this one's positive. So uh, it has polar bonds, but no dipole moment. But as it vibrates, dipole moments, oscillating dipole moments are occurring in this particular vibration. So this one is IR active. It's not the strongest of the vibrations, but it is IR active. And it absorbs light having a frequency of 521 waves per centimeter of wavelength uh, corresponding to that. You'd have to multiply it by the speed of light in centimeters per second to get the frequency. Now another vibration, <coughs> this one here at 1407, 1408 almost, is uh, infrared inactive. It doesn't absorb infrared light because although the, the polarity of each bond is changing, the, the they're changing in equal and opposite directions, so there's no net oscillating dipole. It's, it has zero dipole throughout this motion, so it doesn't absorb any infrared radiation at this frequency. Now, if we look at this one, this is called an asymmetric stretching mode, and this one, uh, because it's asymmetric, the one, one bond is lengthening, the other is shortening, there is an oscillating dipole, and so uh, this one is a fairly strong vibration uh, for, um, absorber at 1386 uh, waves per centimeter, 
and light of that uh, wavelength corresponding to 2386 waves per centimeter will be absorbed. And so, um, you know, we, we uh, can nicely visualize the, the kind of vibrations in various molecules. There's all kinds of things you can do with this and you can explore it on your own. I would I would uh, urge you to first look at the, uh, the video that uh, you'll see right away when you do a Google search for this particular uh, program. So I hope you uh, enjoyed that presentation and uh, um, that you get some use out of this, whether you're a student or a, a teacher of uh, chemistry. So thank you for your attention, and I'll see you next time.